Did you know that nectarines are just peaches with an old school mutation? Nectarines are really just peaches without the fuzz or with hairless or glabrous skin. And that fuzz or lack thereof is controlled by a single gene, a homozygous recessive allele. Today, we're gonna find it. I went to the farmer's market and with all the determination and lack of self-consciousness of a scientist, found both peaches and nectarines of different varietals to sample, five of each. I took them back to the lab and took careful samples of the fruit. Now that we have our fruit samples, we have to extract their DNA. You may have seen strawberry DNA extractions before, or even my own cheek cell extraction many videos ago. Well, the kit I'm using in lab works by a pretty similar principle. Break open cells, get DNA, wash DNA. This is just far more standardized and clean. Now that we have our DNA, we're gonna look for that fuzz-causing gene, and here's where I'm gonna back up a step. Fruit farmers have known for a long time that the fuzzless nectarine was caused by a recessive allele. You can click here to find out more about recessive and dominant alleles. This short version is that you have two copies of every gene, and these can have different variations or alleles. Peaches also have two copies of every gene. Here, we're dealing with a gene involved in peach fuzz formation, and there is an allele that causes fuzz and an allele that doesn't cause fuzz. Now, some alleles are stronger than others and are referred to as dominant. Dominant alleles are stronger than recessive alleles. So if fuzz is dominant over not fuzz, a peach with two copies of the fuzz allele will be fuzzy. Two copies of the not fuzzy allele, not fuzzy. But one fuzz allele and one not fuzz allele, still fuzzy because the fuzz allele is dominant. Now, a 2014 paper from an Italian research group looked into what could have caused these fuzzy and not fuzzy alleles. They found that in nectarines, a long piece of DNA had been inserted into a gene predicted to be involved with making some of this hairy fuzz. This extra long piece of DNA mucked up the gene and caused a loss of function, meaning the gene could no longer contribute to fuzz production. Peaches with one intact copy are still okay, but two mucked up copies and there's just no fuzz. By looking at different nectarine varieties across the world, this group also proposed that this DNA insertion happened in a single event thousands of years ago and was then spread around the world by humans spreading nectarines. So how can we see these fuzzy or not fuzzy alleles in our peach DNA? Well, we're gonna have to amplify our DNA somehow, somehow with PCR. PCR, or a polymerase chain reaction, really deserves its own magnum opus of a video, but in short, we are selectively copying and amplifying a region of DNA. We specify which piece we want to copy by adding tiny strips of DNA called primers that match up to the outside edges of the regions we want. Now we're gonna use that DNA insertion to our advantage here. That 2014 paper described primers that would amplify the region around the insertion. One set of primers amplifies the normal, not inserted DNA. It makes a chunk of DNA that is 941 base pairs long. But one more primer added into the mix amplifies a shorter region only if that insertion is there. So the nectarine allele will amplify a little chunk of DNA while the fuzzy peach allele will amplify a bigger chunk. I have DNA, I have primers, and I have polymerase. PCR time. After PCR in each tube, I have either short nectarine indicative chunks or long peach indicative chunks. But how am I gonna see them? This is an agarose gel. Made from a polysaccharide, agarose, extracted from seaweed, it forms a meshy gel. Big pieces of DNA move slowly through the gel because they get stuck in the mesh of molecules, while little pieces of DNA can zip right through all the holes. This allows us to separate DNA by size. We load our samples into the top of the gel. Then we use electricity to move the DNA through the gel. The negatively charged DNA will move from the negatively charged side of the gel box to the positively charged side. After about an hour, with the help of a special dye and UV light, we can take a picture of our gel. You can see in the picture that I also added a ladder, a bunch of fragments where I know what the DNA size is so that I can compare the sizes of my fragments. And it worked! Nothing in lab ever works on the first try. You can see the nectarines have all these tiny chunks of DNA that moved really far in the gel, while the peaches have these big chunks. And some of the peaches have both, which means they're heterozygous, or they have one each of the fuzz and not fuzz alleles, while the rest of the peaches and nectarines are homozygous, meaning they have two of the same allele. This is so cool to me. I love knowing the genetics behind everyday stuff around me, and this is totally the kind of story that I will now tell at every barbecue I go to this summer and you should too. Go forth and talk about science. 
Also, a couple summers ago, I made a video about the genetics behind seedless watermelons, which you can check out over there, because apparently something about the summer makes me wanna talk about plant biology. So if there's anything, any cool plant or animal or food or bacteria or any sort of cool summary genetic story you want me to talk about before the summer is over, leave your suggestions in the comments below. Suggestions, suggestions. Leave me your suggestions in the comments down below and maybe I will make a video about it because summertime is for summer science.